Hallelujah. You guys have your Bibles? Amen. Praise God. We are I'm almost ready up here. Go. Okay, um, let me talk to you a little bit, explain to you what we talked about on Wednesday night. How many of you were here Wednesday night? Okay, so some people who weren't here, so I'm going to explain something very important uh, to you as we get into this message. Um, we were talking on Wednesday night about um, how spirits enter into people. How, how is it that a demonic spirit can enter into another person, can enter into a person's life? If it were possible for demons, they would just enter into whoever they felt like. So obviously, there are some things that have to happen before a spirit can enter into a person. You understand? Otherwise, they just say, you know, I'm, I'm just going to enter into as many Christians as I want and mess them all up, right? But they can't enter a Christian because the Holy Spirit's living there. Okay? Or they just say, well, I know that person is living a good life. I want to ruin it. I think I'll enter that person's life. But they got they have to get that person to open the door to them for them to be able to enter in. I don't care how much Satan is on the outside of the door. He cannot get inside of you unless you graciously open the door. Or else he can fool you. By, and get you to open the door. And so, this is what the Lord has given me to expose, is the fact that you are responsible for this door. But if you're ignorant of who's knocking at the door and you just open it, then you're in trouble. You understand? Yeah. Um, I want us, first of all, to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 3, and we're going to start about how the, the history of how spirits enter into people. Because it's a continual cycle. Everything you watch in the world is a cycle of demon activity. Some of it's human, but most of it is demonic activity. And the only way to fight against this is to know how to keep them out. Keep them out of your home. Keep them out of your life. Keep them out. Amen. You understand? Yeah. I'm going to explain before I begin to read. Um, we gave out booklets on Wednesday night. And I don't know if you guys brought your booklets back, but... Um, we're talking about a pineal gland. Now I'm going to explain it to you briefly so we can move on. A pineal gland exists in every human being. It is put inside of that human being when on the 49th day that the parent is, is pregnant. So when your baby is in the stomach, on the 49th day, God puts the pineal gland inside of that child's brain. The pineal gland is a spiritual door. And so at the 49th day of a pregnancy, your baby is completely spiritually connected to God. Amen. Because birth is more than a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Because you're birthed in eternity into the world. Because that child is going to live forever. Right. You understand? So now, at the 13th day after that baby is born, now, have, have you, you know, I've been looking at children sometimes, and they're just looking off into, and I'm like, are you looking at angels? What is she looking at, you know? Yes, they are. Because till the 13th day, they have complete spiritual insight. 
They can see both realms for 13 days. You understand? But on the 13th day, God closes the pineal gland in their brain. Why? Because if you go the rest of your, your life seeing angels and demons, you're going to go crazy. Amen. You understand? So on the 13th day of your life, God closes the pineal gland, and then what is in the pineal gland that activated is called DMT. The DMT levels are dormant, and they don't rise again until the time of a person's death. Then when a person is about to die, the DMT levels in their pineal gland will raise dramatically, as it was when you were 13 days old. Because God knows that, that you have to open this door to enter back into the spiritual realm. Because you're about to go somewhere. Rather you're going to heaven, or rather you're going to the other place, that death, that pineal gland opens because it connects the door that leads the spirit out, but it's also the door that brings spirits in. Right, right. And that's what Satan knows that people don't understand. Let's go to the book of Genesis, <coughs> chapter 3. I'm not sure exactly what was going on here in Genesis with, 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 with Satan and Eve, but something spiritual was going. Satan was trying to implant something into her. And he was doing this by giving her something from a tree that was in the garden. After she eats this fruit from this tree, her eyes are going to be open. And then once her eyes are open, this is going to bring what into her life? Sin. Before she eats, there's no sin in her life. But after she eats, now everybody who's born after Adam and Eve has sin in their life. Therefore, they need to be born again. Okay, you in Genesis? Yeah. Um, chapter, we're going to read verse 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees uh, uh, in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden or, and you must not touch it or you will die. Satan says, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Now, all of that Satan wasn't, wasn't lying about. Because something is going to happen when she eats this fruit. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for getting wisdom. She was trying to get wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was, who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized that they were naked. So now at this time their eyes are open. So what is it that they can see that they couldn't see before? So they sewed uh, fig leaves together to hide themselves. Um, let's go down to uh, verse 22. And it says the Lord God made garments, oh, I'm sorry, 22. It says, the Lord said, said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing both good and evil. He must not be allowed uh, to reach out his hand and take from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So this eating this fruit allowed now for man to know both good and evil. God didn't want man to know both good and evil. Amen. You understand? It's like when you have a child. Do you 
want to teach that child all type of the forward things you've learned throughout life no. when they're five? No. no, you're hiding stuff from them, right? Yeah. You don't need to know I'm trying to protect your innocent, right? And then some snake comes along and teaches it to them, right? You understand? Right. So God was trying to protect them because in them was eternal life. Okay. Now, when you are born into this world, God has placed this pineal gland inside of you. And he wants you to keep it closed until you enter into his presence. Now, Satan knows how to open your pineal gland. Amen. You didn't even know you had one. But Satan knows how to open it. How is he going to raise? Because he has to raise the DMT levels in your brain so that the door to your spirit is open. Right. So therefore, he's going to teach you how to open it. So now, things that, that, that make the pineal gland open up are drugs. LSD, uh, uh, DMX, alcohol, all make the pineal gland open up. So when you're in a club and you're drinking and you're having a good time and you're dancing and partying and everybody else in there is drunk, demons are also in there because they got a choice of who they want to enter. Right. Human beings, are we don't understand us. That's why Satan has the advantage. So when a person is drinking now, if a person does LSD, it's going to open its pineal gland because it's going to raise the DMT levels. Okay? If a person um, um, uh, is taking, let's see, here's a, the article that I was uh, showing you looking at this morning. It said the truth about weed or marijuana, cannabis, whatever, it releases your brain's natural DMT. So when a person is smoking marijuana, what is Satan trying to do? He's trying to get in. He's not going to tell you, he's just going to, because you got, when I'm watching this documentary on the wonderful things of marijuana, how it opens, how it, 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 it makes the DMT levels in your brain open up, these people are defending marijuana saying it's good for you. One of the doctors said this morning, and I said, I just started laughing, and I know the Lord, like, said you need to relax and get back to the Bible study. But I started laughing because he was so smart. He said, now, you know, if I don't smoke cannabis, he said, um, I probably would uh, uh, do my bills or something responsible. But once I've spoken cannabis, now my, my creative th thought thinking is going to open up and I'll probably go listen to music. And I said, that's so stupid. So he's defending the fact that his spiritual door, he doesn't know that once he starts smoking, Satan says, let, let me get in here. Now, once Satan enters into a person, once Satan enters into a person, the problem with human beings is that we watch too many movies. Right. We don't think a person has a demon unless his head's spinning and he's spitting up green stuff. But that's not the sign of demon possession. The, the sign of demon possession is now they have something in their life that they can't control. Right. Now they have a, a, a spirit of rage. Now they have a spirit of rebellion. Now they, they have a spirit of lust. They can't stop watching porn. It's a spirit of lust. And it's inside them and they can't get rid of it. Amen. Now they have all these spirits that now once they even decide to give their life to Christ, they not only got to get saved, they got to get rid of all these spirits right. that were living in, that was living inside of them. Amen. Okay? So, Satan knows that drugs opens up your pineal gland. Um, let's continue going through the Bible study. Let me uh, get back to here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. We're going to go over the history of this. How did, how did we even get demons? Because God created angels. He created human beings. What are demons? He never created demons. So here's the story. In Genesis chapter 6, it says, uh, when the men began 
to increase in number on the earth, and the daughters were born to them, the sons of God, that was meaning the angels, sons of God, Benai Elohim, directly created by God, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. Okay, so now, here you have these angels that are on the earth, and their job is to watch over men. To make sure that they know how to do certain things to survive for themselves. In the book of Enoch, um, and the only reason I quote Enoch is because Paul quoted Enoch in the book of Jude. In the book of Enoch, it tells you the complete story of what happened. Yeah. There was angels, 200 of them, that said, we want to take human wives for ourselves. And we want to have children with those human wives. Now, you say, how could that be possible? Because the Bible says this, be careful when you're entertaining strangers, because sometimes you may entertain an angel unaware. You ever read that scripture in the Bible? How can you entertain an angel under, uh, unaware if, if, if he's an angel? He must be in a human form where you don't know that he's an angel. Right. So angels, from the book of Enoch, says that angels have the ability to enter into a human body at any moment that they feel like. So these angels took on human bodies, they went into women, and the women had children. But those are called Nephilim. In verse uh, uh, 4, uh, in, in chapter 6, it said, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also after, when the sons of God went into the daughters of men and had children by them. What is a Nephilim? A Nephilim is a half-breed, you're half-angel, half-human being. Therefore, you are not created by God. God never created you. Amen. So when the spirit of a Nephilim dies, where does that spirit go? Because hell was made for angels. Right. That disobey. Right. So Nephilim are here on the earth. The, the children of Nephilim after the earth, after the flood, are now here on the earth. How wide was the flood? Worldwide. Amen. So there's demons all over the world. Right. How many? I don't know. But there were children being born to them all over the world. See, the flood of Noah was not just about the disobedience of men. It was about cleansing the earth from Nephilim. Right. So now you have these spirits all over the world. Amen. In, now, here you go. In the book of, 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 of uh, Enoch, I'm going to read this scripture. It says, uh, now as they're teaching these men destructive things, it says, and Azazel taught men uh, swords and knives and shields, breastplates, and made known to them the metals and the arts uh, art of working them. Bracelets and ornaments and the use of autonomy uh, and the beautifying of eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and coloring and, 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 and uh, tinctures. And it says, and there arose more godly godlessness, and they committed fornication. And they were led astray and became corrupt in all their way. Semjaji sought it, taught the human beings enchantment and root cutting. So now here is a here is a, a rebellious angel, a demonic spirit, teaching men root cutting and enchantment. You know what root cutting is? It's, it's those plants that we say, well, God made, well, when you're talking to unbelievers, God put it on the earth, so it must be good for us. Everything God put on the earth is not for you. That's right. But the angels that rebelled against God knew that there were some plants that would raise the DMT level in your brain and give you illusions, spiritual insight, and raise the DMT level to the point where the door to you is now open. So he's teaching them drug addiction all the way from the book of Genesis. Wow. So Satan knows about this, and I think he knew as far back as, as Eve how to enter into a person. Amen. So God is trying to get us to make sure that we don't open our door to Satan. 
Amen. Okay? Amen. He wants us to keep our door closed. I have to say this because I know that some Christians like to go to nightclubs. Alcohol plus demonic music plus dancing raises the DMT in your brain. So that means while you're dancing and drinking and partying, everybody in that room has their door open to Satan. So where do you think Satan goes on the weekend? Where do you think he goes with his friend? You're getting dressed for the club and he's getting dressed for the club. Right. Because that's where the doors open. Because if he doesn't have doors, look, if you have all these spirits, they have to have bodies. Right. They can't wander in dryness all their life. They're looking for bodies to enter. But you have, but they have to find people that are willing to open the door to them. Okay. I want to um, explain something to you. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. I'm explaining something to my Christian friends who need to learn how to protect themselves and keep your door closed. Amen. We talked about on Wednesday the difference between invocation and evocation. The difference between invocation is you, you open the door to your spirit and you're inviting the spirit in. Evocation is you're not inviting the spirit in, but you have music that's going on that's evoking the spirits. You're watching uh, the movie Rated R, Drag Me to Hell, and while you're watching it, you're evoking spirits into your home. Okay? They don't make movies for you. You gotta understand that they don't need the money. Amen. They make they make movies to keep spiritual activity going. Amen. You understand? They don't need your money. They don't make rock and roll for music. They make rock and roll to keep spiritual activity going. Amen. Because they need a way to keep your doors open. Amen. So, are you in Revelation chapter two? Yes. Okay. Verse five says this. Look. It says, remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand. What is the lampstand? The Holy Spirit. Here is God in the book of Revelation warning people, if you don't repent, I'm going to come to you and remove my spirit from you. Yeah. You understand? Because we're supposed to have his spirit clothed over us. Because the Bible says, when I come, make sure that I, when I come, I do not find you naked. So God's saying, stay clothed. Stay in the Holy Spirit. Keep the Holy Spirit on you. So he says, he's warning them, I'm going to come and take it from you. Now this falls in the face of every preacher that says, girl, once you save, you always save it no matter how you act. Which is, I think, one of the biggest lies from Satan. Amen. Because while you're sinning, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 9, or chapter 10. Maybe I need to just tell you about it, but I want you to know where it's at. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 10. I'm going to read the end of this story, 10 verse 18. This, this is the end of the story. Now, 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 now listen to this very carefully. Please, if you don't listen to anything else, listen to this very carefully because it will help you. It says in verse 18, Then the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the temple and, and stopped above the cherubim. Okay? So the glory of the Lord departed from the temple and went out and rested with the angels and out with the cherubim. What happened here? Well, he told Ezekiel, come here Ezekiel, I want you to see something. He brought Ezekiel over, you can start reading that chapter 9, and he says, I want you to look in this hole that I made, and I want you to look inside and see what the priests were doing inside the temple. Ezekiel looks and he sees them worshiping idols inside the temple. 
He says, come here, I'm going to show you something even worse. He says, look inside this hole. He looks inside and the priests are committing fornication inside the temple. So he keeps showing Ezekiel all this sin that's going on inside the temple of God where his Holy Spirit is residing in the Shekinah glory. Yeah. So he says to his Holy Spirit, come up out of there. And the, the Spirit comes up and leaves the temple and moves to the outer court and further and further away from the temple until it's done. Okay. So now, you have a situation here where God is showing you that if sin is inside the temple, the Spirit is taken out. Okay, but God don't live in temples no more. Where does God live now? In you. So therefore, if there's sin inside the temple, should God leave the, the, the spirit, His Spirit inside that temple while sin is going on? No. It doesn't happen. This is why when Christ was on the cross, He said, you have forsaken me because He did not feel the presence of God at that moment because the Spirit could not stay because He took on all of our sins. So that was the first time him and his father were apart ever. Amen. So, if this is so, let's take a look in Luke chapter 11, where I can finish up. Luke chapter 11, verse 25. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to read verse 26. Ooh, let's see. Let's start at verse 24 so we can get a full understanding. It says here, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, I want us to stop there. When does evil spirits come out of you? If you come forth and you accept Jesus Christ, every spirit has to go. Amen. You understand? The bad habit won't go. Because you're going to have to still work on that and get in your Bible and renew your mind in the Word of God. But the spirit that was controlling that activity has to go. Once you accept Christ, it has to go. 